Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I am going to put the Fossil Gen 5 against the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 for an in-depth comparison. So let's get started. If you are someone new to our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel as you do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. Also check out our playlist tab as we have dedicated playlist for Fossil, Samsung and Fitbit smartwatches so be sure to check it out. Okay, this is going to be a long in-depth comparison so stick with me till the end as I'll be comparing these top of the line smartwatches against each other in various aspects so you can make a good informed decision to purchase either or. I have linked all their accessories in the description down below which I'll be talking about in this video so be sure to check them out as well. So let's start with a brief unboxing experience and price. So the Galaxy Watch Active 2 came in a box like this. And if you have been following me, I'm a big fan of minimalistic packaging. And on the other hand, the Fossil Gen 5 came in a box like this one. Since I purchased the Fossil Gen 5 from a Fossil outlet locally, I also got a designer metallic tin box, which is also quite impressive. So in terms of unboxing, despite of my bias towards minimalistic packaging, I will go with the Fossil Gen 5 as it feels more premium and contemporary. Now in terms of price, Fossil Gen 5 cost me 437 Canadian dollar and the Galaxy Watch Active cost me 448 Canadian dollar. So they both are relatively around the same price point. Keep in mind the price may vary depending on the store um, deals and the time of the year you're looking at. But relatively they both are about the same price point. Okay next category to compare against will be the exterior looks and customizable options. Now Fossil comes in two varieties like the Carlyles which are more masculine and Juliana which are more feminine and all of their designs as you can see are eye catching and they also come with different bands. The one I have has a premium quality silicon band and it's black in color. So I'm personally more inclined towards Fossil for a wide variety of vibrant design choices to suit your needs. And I have seen all their models in person and for all the ladies out there, you can't resist falling in love with their Juliana styles. Keep in mind all their watches uh, come in the standard dim dimension of 44mm by 12mm and are about 64 grams in weight. Galaxy Watch Active 2 on the other hand has various models with color like uh, Cloud Silver, Aqua Black, Stainless Gold and Gold. And the models like Active 2 44mm and Active 2 40mm which I have over here. Um, and the LTE version as well. LTE is not even an option for Fossil so if you are looking for an LTE watch Fossil is out of the equation. However. With Galaxy Watch Active 2, I think it's nice as you have an option for a smaller watch in case if you have tiny wrist but with Fossil, you don't. I personally don't have a big wrist or forearm and you can see for yourself both of these watches look decent and fits quite well on my wrist. Fossil Gen 5 is thin, sleek and stylish with its 3 button layout and a rotating crown which is also a button with a nice clicky feel. And Active 2 on the other hand seems a bit bulky relative to Gen 5 with its two button option layout. Both of these watches have removable wristband so you can customize for your styling preference with aftermarket bands. I have linked few in the description of this video so make sure to check them out. Fossil Gen 5 has 22mm band and the Active 2 has 20mm band. So for me in terms of design and looks, Fossil Gen 5 takes the lead over here. Next category is specs and internals. Fossil Gen 5 obviously wins over here as it has 1.28 inch AMOLED display which is more sharper than the Active 2 with its uh, 416 by 416 pixel and 328 pixel per inch screen, uh, density. It has a Snapdragon 3100 processor with 1 gig of RAM and 8 gig of onboard storage. It has all the sensors like altimeter, accelerometer, gyroscope, heart rate sensors, 
uh, NFC for Google Pay, untethered G GPS, Wi-Fi, but sadly it has the older version of Bluetooth 4.2 and it's only 3 ATM water resistance uh, so you can still, still take it for a swim but only 2-3 meters. Fossil Gen 5 runs on Google's Wear OS so it has tons of watch faces, games and apps to choose from. On the other hand, Galaxy Watch Active 2 has 1.4 inch Super AMOLED display with only 360 by 360 pixels uh, but it has a, a, a pixel density of 364 pixels per inch. It also has a Corning, uh, Corning Gorilla Glass DX Plus which is obviously stronger in terms of protection than the Fossils Glass. Active 2 has a dual core 1.15 GHz Exynos 9110 chipset with its 1.5 GHz RAM. The RAM is slightly higher than the Fossil Gen 5 but Active 2 only has 4 GHz of onboard storage so you can store less songs for on the go versus Fossil Gen 5. It also has all the sensors like altimeter, accelerometer, gyroscope, Wi-Fi, NFC for Samsung Pay, untethered GPS, but Active 2 has a superior heart rate sensor with 8 photodiodes which is more reliable than the Gen 5 theoretically speaking. Active 2 also has a newer Bluetooth 5.0 with less connectivity issue and it's also backward compatible with older Bluetooth versions. Unlike Fossil Gen 5, Active 2 has a dormant ECG sensor uh, which Samsung has not activated yet but it's planning to uh, activate it in early 2020. I'm not sure when but I'm eagerly waiting for it. Active 2 is also 50 ATM IP68 water resistance so that means you can take it for swim up to 5 meters. Active 2 runs on the Samsung's proprietary Tizen OS. Um, operating system which is more reliable and has more support and it's also energy efficient versus the Wear OS but has slightly less number of apps and games. Both of these watches has a built-in speaker and a microphone but I personally found that the Fossil speaker is more louder and clear. So for me Fossil Gen 5 wins over here again but hey don't get me wrong over here active 2 obviously is not at all a bad option it was really tough for me to pick one over here next section is navigation and menu layout fossil gen 5 has the classic Wear OS interface and with the rotating crown it's just awesome and flawless scrolling down you get seven quick uh, options uh, which includes uh, seven different settings if you scroll up, you get notifications. To enter the menu, you have to click the crown button and you can use the crown to navigate around the menu. One thing I found with the crown is that although it's su super convenient to use, it does not always work with all the apps. On the other hand, the Active 2 has the Tizen OS experience and the cherry on top is the digital rotating bezel with a haptic vibrating feedback making you feel as if it's a real mechanical bezel. The cool part is the rotating bezel is deep rooted with all the apps and menu so no matter where you are the bezel will work period. The top setting menu is customizable unlike the fossil where you only get 7 options uh, here you can even add more pages and setting shortcuts which I really like. You can enter the menu by pressing the bottom right button and get notification by swiping left to right. So for me in this section again it was really hard to pick one but I'll go with the active 2 as I personally am more inclined to the rotating bezel and more so its integration with all the apps and menu is just seamless. Next up is the fitness tracking which is a huge one. Fossil Gen 5 has the Google Fit. For your fitness tracking, Fossil Gen 5 was ac actually able to detect the strength training moves I did in the gym like bench pressing, uh, shoulder press, etc. Uh, versus the Active 2 is not able to do that. Fossil to me seemed like it was not overshooting the calorie and heart rate and Active 2 felt like it was overshooting the numbers. Both watches are great at tracking your outdoor run with the onboard GPS. Active 2 
however has the added benefit of ECG sensor uh, whenever it gets announced. Active 2 I found is great with the sleep tracking and the problem with the Fossil Gen 5 is due to its short battery life it's not that efficient with the GPS uh, run tracking plus music playing and sleep tracking as I have seen the battery drains down to about 30% with just the use of GPS plus music playing for about 20 to 30 minutes of run. Active 2 is more safe with the swim due to its 50 ATM IP68 certification versus Gen 5 has only 3 ATM of water resistance. So I will select Active 2 over here. Stay tuned by subscribing as I'll be posting an in-depth fitness tracking comparison uh, among the Gen 5 and the Active 2 in few weeks. Now let's talk about the battery life. Before we can even compare it, not to blame Fossil but the Wear OS is well known in the tech industry for its notorious battery performance. However, I really appreciate Fossil's effort by adding its own software for extended battery mode. I have done a detailed video about it which is linked up here in case if you guys want to check it out once you're done watching this one. But even with that, where obviously you have to compromise by turning off the Wi-Fi, location, NFC, screen brightness and all I am able to get is maximum of 2 days of battery life. And if I were to use Gen 5 at its full potential with everything turned on, it won't even go past 10 hours. On the other end, Active 2 is awesome at the battery performance. I can easily get 2 plus days of battery life and if I were to overboard by turning down the brightness, Wi-Fi, location, NFC and all, I can even get maybe 3 plus days of battery life easily. Surprisingly, even with the maximum usage and all the connectivity options on, I can easily get about 30 hours of battery life from the Active 2. Fossil is not even nearly close to the Active 2 in this section. Fossil has its own magnetic charger which is not a wireless charger. Keep this in mind so you have to carry this charger with you all the time to charge your Fossil Gen 5. Active 2 on the other hand has an actual wireless charger and I can even charge the Active 2 from back of my Samsung S10 Plus as the S10 Plus has a power sharing mode uh, so I can charge the Active 2 wirelessly without a charger. Both these watches take relatively about the same time to fully charge so for me undoubtedly Active 2 wins over here. Lastly, let's talk about the software, apps, games and watch face options and wrap it up with my final say. Fossil Gen 5 has the Wear OS which is well known uh, for tons of apps and games. I have done top free games on the Fossil Gen 5 video which is linked up here in case if you guys want to check it out once you're done watching this one. Uh, Gen 5 also has a huge selection of watch faces from the Play Store. You can even get functional apps like uh, maps, camera, find my phone, audio recorder, web browser, flashlight, spotify and much more. The same are also available on active 2 but via the galaxy app store. It seems like the apps on active 2 are more battery efficient. Active 2 has Bixby which is nothing in comparison to the Google Assistant as obviously the Google Assistant on Gen 5 is more robust at detecting voice and can do a way lot more functions than the Bixby. But obviously in terms of sheer quantity of the apps and games, Fossil Gen 5 wins over here. So my final verdict is that both of these smartwatches are top of the line smartwatches undoubtedly. If you are a Wear OS fan, go with the Fossil Gen 5 and if you want an overall great watch with 2 plus days battery life, then go for the Active 2. It would be definitely hard for anyone to pick either or, but if I were to be really forced to pick one or the other, so after using both these watches for more than a month, I can say that I will select Active 2 because of its battery life, robust connectivity digital rotating bezel and more reliable Tizen OS. Again that's just me and don't get me wrong Fossil Gen 5 is also a great watch 
and I can gladly recommend Fossil to anyone with its awesome design, audacious look, crisp display, great Google Assistant, multitude of apps and games, the rotating crown and the double onboard storage. So that's it. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up and maybe give it a thumbs up anyways as an appreciation to our effort for making this video. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and take care. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.